Hi, my name is Ohan Oda from Columbia University, and I'll present a work done jointly with our Kama Ervetio, Mingus Gunn, Stephen Feiner, and uh, Barbara Tversky. So in this talk, we present two techniques for remote assistance uh, using virtual copies of physical domain objects in VR and AR environments, as you see in these pictures. Before we go on with details, uh, let's consider a uh, very generic situation. Imagine you're on a road trip and uh, your bike broke apart due to an accident. Luckily, you had the tools to fix your bike, but since you've never fixed it before, you have no idea how to fix it. If you have a manual, you can read it, but it takes time to find the relevant instruction, and those instructions can be hard sometimes to understand. A better way may be calling an expert. Uh, so you can ask your questions directly through your phone, or you can even share your video uh, through your phone. But it can still be challenging, uh, because the expert to pick, this, pick up this or put this into that, and you're wondering what, what I'm talking about. So uh, also, the expert can tell you something uh, specific, like uh, the name of the uh, bike, like a stem. But if you've never heard of that term, you still don't understand what, what to work with. So we use VR and AR technologies to make this process much easier so that the expert can directly instruct what to pick up or uh, how to align a part with another in your environment with visual aids. In industrial settings, experts are usually known as subject matter expert, which we abbreviate as SME, and the user at the local environment as local user or tech, which stands for technician. Using AR for remote assistance has been quite popular, and many researchers have come up with interesting approaches, as you see here. However, most of the previous work allowed the remote SME to add supplemental information in the local user's environment, but cannot easily indicate how to precisely place a physical object relative to another in 3D. There are some existing systems, such as one by Adcock, that allow the SME to show how to place an object, but their approach is limited to a planar surface, as you see here. Tate and Billinghart system works in 3D space, but the SME interacts with only keyboard and mouse on a monoscopic uh, desktop display. In contrast, we allow the SME to show how to align a physical object relative to another directly in 3D on a stereoscopic head-worn display. Our two approaches are based on concepts similar to how a co-located SME would instruct the user. First one is point 3D, in which the SME indicates which points are supposed to touch between two objects. As an example, with uh, this nice universal charger we got from this conference and an iPhone, the SME tells you that you're supposed to insert this charger to this hole. The other one is demo. Oh, I think I forgot to show that one, but anyway. <laughs> that shows the place. OK, the second one is demo 3D. Continuing on our iPhone example, the SME directly demonstrates you by inserting the iPhone with the right charger to indicate what you're supposed to, uh, you know, we're supposed to uh, insert together. So based on those concepts, uh, but before going to the details, in our environment, both the SME and local user were head-on displays. The local user sees the view in AR, and the SME sees in either VR or AR through the eyes of local user. So before we dive into the details of our approaches, we want to point out that we make certain assumptions to, uh, so for our approaches to work. In the local user's environment, we assume that uh, the sixth of pose of each relevant physical object is tracked. And here, we track the top and bottom parts of an aircraft engine combustion chamber. In the remote SMEs environment, we assume that each of the, these uh, re physical, uh, relevant physical objects is represented with a virtual copy, which we call a virtual proxy. And each of these virtual proxy mimics the sixth of pose of its corresponding physical object. In addition, we assume that the system tracks the sixth of pose of the uh, local user's head and SME's head, and also a set of interaction devices used by SME that we'll talk about later. All tracking in our implementation uses OptiTrack system, which uses retroreflective markers, which you can see in these pictures. So our approach uses something called virtual replicas. And those are basically copies of virtual proxies that can be manipulated by the SME. 
the SME uses virtual replica to show how to align one object relative to another. This concept was inspired by Boodoo interaction of Pierce and et al., in which a user creates a copy of virtual object and operations performed on that copy affect the original. So how do we create those virtual replicas? The SME uses a sixth of uh, tracked input device, as you see on the top right corner, to create a virtual replica by selecting a virtual proxy and grabbing it by pressing a physical button. Then the SME can manipulate the replica by crouching and decrouching, as you see over here. So now we're going to explain how each of our tech approaches work using these uh, virtual replicas. In point 3D, the SME manipulates a virtual replica in one hand and specifies the contact points by recasting from a 3D pointing device held in another hand. When a contact point is specified, it also appears on the corresponding physical object in the local user's environment. The SME can switch between three different contact points with contact point color and shape appearing above the 3D arrow. Once the SME specifies a pair of contact points uh, between the top and bottom part, a color-coded um, color rubber band line shows up. Uh, and uh, when three pairs of contact points are specified, the local user can figure out how to align the top with the bottom using those visualizations. The SME can specify contact points directly on the virtual proxies, but virtual, uh, virtual replica allows the SME to specify contact points more comfortably from a vantage point. So in demo 3D, this is the second technique, the SME simply picks up a virtual replica and aligns it with a virtual proxy to show how they should fit together. Then, the local user sees a virtual replica aligned in the uh, local user's environment and will try to match uh, the pose with its corresponding physical object. This sounds very simple, but there are a few problems, or actually two problems for this approach. One of them comes from lack of haptic feedback. Because the interactions are performed on virtual objects, when the SME tries to align them, they can interpenetrate. Also, when the SME tries to fine tune the final alignment, the top part can slightly be shifted from the desired location or not exactly touching the bottom part, which makes the instruction take more longer to make it exactly touch and aligned. To address this issue, we use something called constraints, which are predefined by the SME prior to the uh, actual instruction. The reason why we're using a constraint is that the top and bottom part may align like A or B, but it will never align like C. So the SME can specify constraint where five DOF of the top part is fixed with one DOF of your orientation flexible. So during the instruction, when the SME places the top close to the constraint region, it'll make the top snap to the fixed five DOF pose with one DOF of your orientation fine-tuned by the SME. The other problem is mental rotation. When the local user tries to match their corresponding physical object with a virtual replica, it requires some thinking to figure out how to orient the physical object so that it matches the virtual replica placed by the SME, especially if the object doesn't have a lot of uh, prominent geometries to match against. To address this issue, we use a similar rubber band uh, line visualization as point 3D, but for this case, the line connects the points at the corresponding location between the physical object and the virtual replica so that it helps the local users understand how to match the two exactly. To study how well our techniques perform, we conducted a user study, and we compared time uh, to complete an alignment task, but we, not for accuracy, since we require the pose to be within a small range of distance orientation from the correct pose to end the trial. We've recruited 22 participants as diets, uh, with age ranging from 18 to 26, and five of them are male. Prior to the study, we gave them standard tests to test their um, stereo vision, color brightness, and also spatial ability. And the member who scored higher on spatial ability test played the role of remote SME, and the other played the role of local user. They were allowed to communicate verbally, just like in regular um, assistance uh, scenario. 
And also, since each of the techniques require extensive training, we decided to have one of our researchers go through the entire study process as a SME to show the participant who plays the role of SME how to instruct the local user using each technique, while the participant playing the role of local user complete the task just like in real study. We have recorded this data for later analysis as trained SME. Since the recruited SMEs are not real experts, we've displayed transparent meta objects at each contact point for all three techniques during the uh, study as a guide. We've asked three-part questionnaire before, during, and after the study, including unweighted NASA TOX and uh, ranking of each techniques. The task was to have the SME instruct a local user aligning the top part with the Lego fixture. The reason uh, we didn't use the bottom part, uh, because if we use it, the task would be quite simple with uh, only a few possible poses. So we created a Lego fixture to provide variations of six of poses to rest the top on top of it. This setting allowed 144 unique poses with eight outer pegs around the central peg, and each peg providing three levels of heights and plus six levels of yaw orientation. So as a control condition, we've implemented a 2D sketch-based approach called Sketch2D, similar to some of the recent approaches. The SME uses a tablet with multi-gesture interaction to navigate the scene and draw 3D lines casted on the virtual proxies to give instructions to their local user. Based on our pilot studies, we formulated three hypotheses. First, we expected demo 3D to be faster uh, faster than point 3D because point 3D requires the SME to specify six contact points while the demo 3D requires a single motion for demonstration. Also because of the constraint, demo 3D will, will be quicker for the SME to precisely align the top part. Second, we, assume, we ex also expected that point 3D to be faster than sketch 2D because point 3D uses bimanual interaction in 3D compared to uh, 2D interaction on tablet for a 3D task. Third, we expected that both SMEs and local users would prefer demo 3D uh, because the interaction is simple for SME and for local users, it's easy for them to match demonstrated posts with those visual aids that we uh, showed. So study results showed that uh, demo 3D was significantly faster than point 3D and sketch 2D for both recruited novice SMEs and the researcher who acted as trained SME. It also showed that point 3D was significantly faster than sketch 2D for trained SME, but not significant difference for novice SMEs. To find out why point 3D didn't perform better than sketch 2D for novice SMEs, we reviewed videos of the study and found out that for point 3D, many of the novice SMEs had problems bumping the tracking markers against each other that's attached to those uh, interaction devices that here on display. We, we believe this could be improved if the SMEs could see their hand uh, in AR mode rather than VR. Just to note that the completion time includes from the start of the SMEs instruction to end of local users' correct alignment. And the significance was measured with Bonferroni corrected alpha of 0 0.0167. Our recruited participants answered uh, three-part questionnaires. And the results showed that Demo 3D was ranked significantly higher than Sketch 2D for local users but no significant difference between other techniques for novice SMEs and local users. But as you can see from the, these figures, majority of the local users ranked, uh, ma majority of the novice SMEs and use local users ranked Demo 3D as their most preferred approach. And the top numbers over there shows the mean ranking values. The unweighted NASA TLX showed that uh, there was significant difference in perceived, perceived uh, physical demand temporal demand and perceived performance among techniques. Uh, and Novice Smith felt that point 3D was um, physically more demanding than Sketch 2D. As a conclusion, uh, we presented two approaches, uh, namely Demo 3D and point 3D, using virtual replicas to perform six stuff alignment tasks, which is a core, uh, one of the core tasks in remote assistant. We compared these approaches with Sketch 2D which is a 2D sketch-based uh, approach similar to ones used in, in previous work. The study showed Demo 3D performed faster than Point 3D and Sketch 2D, while Point 3D performed faster than Sketch 2D with trained SME, but not with novice SMEs. The questionnaire revealed that the local users preferred Demo 3D over Sketch 2D 
and Novi SMEs generally felt Demo 3D to be faster and better than Sketch 3D. We have some future work, but since I'm out of time, uh, I'll let you read the paper. And so thank you for listening uh, to my talk, and I'll take questions from now on. So as you've noticed, we allow five minutes for questions this year, so lots of time to work up your courage and come to the mic. Uh, while the, the first person is doing that, I'm interested to know the role of point of view. When you talk about the motivating example of like uh -huh. an expert offering a, yeah. a helping hand, uh -huh. where do you put the, the SME's eyeballs? Are they inside the user's head? No, it is actually in, so, so we actually allow two views. One is a VR view, which is self-contained self by SME, so it's, but uh, the thing is, the SME's location is basically represented with some, uh, a proxy on the local user's environment. So it's not through the uh, local user's eye, but they are actually somewhere else so that can actually freely navigate within the local user's uh, environment because it's mo we assume it's model. And there's also a mode called uh, AR mode, which we're not using for a study, but that's through the eyes of uh, the local user. So we provide two modes, and the uh, SME can switch between those to do whatever they like. And did you find that uh, people tended to prefer a particular orientation? I mean, what? Uh, orientation the meaning, yeah. oh, okay, sorry. Orientation meaning either VR or a, AR. A point right? of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, the advantage of using AR is if there's a discrepancy between your model environment and the actual physical environment in local user, then you want to actually see through their eyes so that you can detect the difference. But because our case was, you know, we know that everything was modeled perfectly. So uh, we, during the pilot study, we found nobody was using the AR mode. So for the study, we basically just disabled it and, uh, because people were switching modes by accident most of the time. So uh, for our specific uh, scenario, most people use VR. But in a situation, in real situation, where you need to figure out the difference between real and your model environment, then I believe the SME would switch between those two. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we have time for another couple of questions. I'll maybe ask our next speaker to come and set up your laptop while. Uh, are there any other questions in the audience? Oh, Dr. Lay. Hi, I'm, Hi. I'm Darren Lay with Tactual Labs. Um, this, uh, from the presentation, it appears like you were only dealing with two objects. I was wondering how you think this would be affected if you had more than two objects, if it there is. were a variety and they had to find them. Yes, so the thing is, um, in the explanation, we used the uh, top part of uh, air uh, craft engine combustion chamber and bottom part. But in the study, as you saw, we had a setting that actually allowed all different sorts of variations of poses. So it's not specific to between two objects. I mean, between specific two objects. It can be applied to any combination of two objects. Because you use, I mean, if you're thinking about multiple objects, but you always attach two together, right? And then you work on the next one. So it can be combined, basically. It's not limited to just two, but it's gonna be a sequence of two, right? Combining them, so. If I can add something to that, although we didn't do it in this study, we've done other studies in which part of the uh, thing that has to be done by the person uh, seeing the system is to actually find and identify a particular object, and then we have different ways of being able to highlight that object that they need to pick up and select relative to other ones. But that was not something that we were worrying about over here. 